All right, guys, welcome to 2 John 1. Now, let's see, 2 John 1 has one chapter, and I think 3 John 1 has one chapter. So we're down to the last two chapters of John's writings, um, of his personal writings that we have. So let's get into this, and let's see what we have, He what he has to offer to us. That's going to help us in this day and age because this is a, these books have been great and there's so much more in here than we've covered. I'm, if I was to try to cover, and this is why my videos are the way they are, if I was trying to cover everything that was in here, every chapter would be hours and hours of video content. Well, that would take away everybody else's responsibility to go and do their own research because he, he wants us in the Word. My goal is to give you a taste and so that you will go and dig deeper. Because when each one of us does our own journey through the Word, we learn, and the Holy Spirit teaches us. Hearing is one thing. Reading yourself is a completely different thing. Greeting the elect lady. Verse 1. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us, and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. Notice he said what the commandment was, truth. It's one of the most, the, one of the most important ones. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. There's the second one. Two commandments, truth and love. And love fulfills the first one and is a result of the first one. How amazing. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. And this is incredible. But it is, even today, we have that. <clears throat> even today, and it's a shockingly high number. I forget wh who did that poll, but the poll, the numbers were astonishing. They, they just asked basic questions. And one of the ones was, uh, do you believe Jesus actually rose from the dead? And 64% of Christians that were polled in that poll said no. How is that possible? 52% denied that he was the son of God. Another, what was it, 60 or something, 70 something percent said they didn't believe the word of God was true. And these are people calling themselves Christians. How is this possible? How is this a thing? Well, here you go. John is warning us about that. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Listen to what Christ said. And you automatically fall into what the Father said. What did Christ say? Truth and love. What did the Father say? Take those Ten Commandments. Truth, love. You can find which ones correlate with each one. And uh, several of them overlap into the two. So it, if you live in truth and walk in truth. And live in love and walk in love. You fulfill the entire law. It's that easy. It's that easy. And it's what we're told to do. So simple. If anyone comes to you, verse 10, and does not bring this doctrine, what doctrine? The doctrine he just gave you. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house or greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So you don't even want to deal with a person like this. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses come to your house, as nice as they may be, You just got, got yourself engaged in a spiritual war. You're not fighting with that person, but with the spirits that are pushing that person and driving them. Because what they bring is a false doctrine, a doctrine that Christ didn't give. I'm not picking on Jehovah's Witnesses, but 
they wrote their own Bible. No, no, no. Big, big mistake. It's the same thing with Catholics. Not all, but most. It's the same thing with Mormons. They wrote their own book. They don't even read the Bible anymore. So, if those people come to us and bring a different doctrine, or what does the Bible say? If they're bringing a different doctrine, and you can just sit down and ask them, so, well, let me ask you guys some questions. Because they believe, especially Jehovah's Witnesses, that nobody outside the Jehovah's Witness Church knows what the Bible says. I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with people in my driveway. I'm, I'm there working on a vehicle because I have to go to work. And I have to, I'm going to work that night. i got to get the vehicle done. And they were like, hey, you think you can come talk to us for a minute? Well, I really need to get my vehicle fixed because I have to go to work in a couple hours. Well, but, you know, talking about the Lord would be, is much more important. Oh, okay. So I got out and I started talking to him. And I said, so uh, does the Bible say that I, uh, if I don't provide for my family, I'm worse than an unbeliever? With a smile went off her face instantly because she knew that that's what it said. I said, so, you know, it's important for me to get my truck fixed. I said, but please, go ahead. And so I sat down on a bumper, and I'm sitting there listening to him, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, verse for verse. When she finally realized she was going to lose, because I was matching her and then compounding multiple verses onto her, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit calling it up, because I can't remember it. She finally realized there was no way she was going to win this. And she'd go, okay, well, we're going to you know, go. We'll leave you back to do what you're going to do. You know. So I followed her to her guard door, verse, 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 just throwing them back on there. And they left while I was talking to them. Another one came another time, and it was two women and a, and a guy. They brought up a great big guy, and thinking he was going to be intimidating. And again, I'm working on my vehicle. He was visibly angry. You could tell this guy was mad. And I'm verse, 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 verse. I just kept laying them on him. And they finally gave up, walked, got in the car and left. Do not receive them. Do not receive them. If you do, you share in their evil deeds. Now, I know people that jump, I know people personally, that jump from Jehovah's Witness Church to Mormon Church. Have nothing to do with them. There may be some wonderful people that are in there. I have friends that are Catholics. They may be, may be wonderful people. I don't receive their doctrine, and when they were they are speaking, I correct them. I did the other night with my army buddy who's Catholic, and he's talking about what the Catholic. I said, "Oh no, no!" I said, "Dude, you got that way wrong." And there's a couple of times where they'll, you know, buck up. No, that's not correct. And I'm like, "Listen, I do this every day." Every day, and I've been doing this every single day for four years. If you would like, I will email you the referencing material. But I can tell you with full confidence, you are you are completely incorrect. Your understanding has been given to you from somebody who's lying. Instead of just believing what the people are telling you, you need to go do your own research. This is the way of the world today. John warns us, watch out for that and avoid it. So I listened to their spiel for a minute or two. But when it's clear what they're trying to do, Scripture, 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 the Holy Spirit calls it up and I just spew it out. And they can't take it. They can't take whenever they're <coughs> conversing with somebody who is able to quote Scripture that easily. Because they believe nobody outside of their organization or their group should have that ability. Even in the last church that I was at, the guys hated that stuff because they would start talking about that. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit would put it on me to do it. And I would start popping all these other scriptures off. And they hated it because it, it, it brought conviction. That night we were having Iron Sharpens Iron after the, after the Sutherland Spring shooting. And the pastor said, if you guys feel comfortable, I would like y'all to open carry when we're doing Iron Sharpens Iron. It was an evening. It was out, you know, outside the church, but it was a church group for just the men. And uh, cool. So I carried. And we went up there one day. I was the only one that had a pistol on me. One other guy did, but it was in his glove box. And so we were getting ready to leave. We did the whole, whole ceremony, did all the stuff, went through all the scriptures and everything. 
And we got done. I said, I have a question before we leave. Am I the only one carrying a pistol tonight? And they went around the room and this and that. And, and right away, you can see eyes started to look down. Yeah, but I mean, we're in a position now, you know. I, I said, I said, does it make any sense for us not to carry since this is what we talked about doing? <laughs> well, we're far enough off the road and everything. I was like, yeah. And the other guy was, he was an ex-MP from the Army. But I, and I looked at him and I, and I said, I said, you know as well as I do, it only takes one time. And not, head started to nod a little bit and other people turned their head and started to walk out. I said, it only takes one time for somebody to come in here and kill a bunch of people. That's what happened to Sutherland Springs. It only takes one time. People started carrying their gun after that. <laughs> See, but they see they didn't like me because of that conviction. This is what we're supposed to do. It's a spiritual warfare that we're up against. A, a spirit of complacency. A spirit of hypocrisy. You know, a, a spirit of, of I forget what the, the term is. It's, a, it's of, of not paying attention. So it's so important for us to listen to what's being told us in here because we deal with this every day. We deal with this every day. John tells us, don't have anything to do with that. To, to even greet them is going to put you in alignment with what they're doing. Makes you partaker in their evil deeds. If you know a church is preaching false doctrine and you go to that church, there's a high chance you're now associated with that because you're helping promote it. I definitely do not give my money to a church that does that. I don't give my money to any organization that does that. Because I don't want to be a partaker in that. So consequently, it's really hard to find, find a place. But homeless shelters... Women's shelters, pantries, where they feed the homeless, those are great places to donate. So we have to be careful. And in our generation, this age, where we're at now, because we're so close to the end, is probably the worst time to be able to do this. Because a lot of doors remain closed, but God will open them. If, if there's one there, he will open it. So be careful what John's warning is here that I've highlighted in red. Verse 12. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. Now, evidently, John did get to go and to talk to her personally because we don't have any writings. If he did write them down, they're gone, or he just didn't write them down because he got to come and speak directly to them and nobody transcribed it. That's okay. We have what we need. The important part is to be careful. Observe the warning. Watch out. Because it is so easy to be deceived. It's so easy to get caught up in the lie. It's so easy to be in, inadvertently become a partaker in somebody else's evil. And so we have to be careful. We have to watch out. And what I've found is you end up not going around a lot of people. You end up not getting involved in a lot of things. And I got to tell you, I have to be honest, I'm okay with it. There's so much stress in those things, unnecessary stress. There's so many hassles. I'm okay with it. Because I have greater waiting for me elsewhere. That is what I'd rather keep my focus on. And so if doors shut for me here, cool. There's a great big one that's going to open up there. If access to things disappear from me here i have all the access up there so i'm not so worried about it anymore i hate that you know because my whole thing all my life was was i loved to fellowship with others now now it's not such a big thing but you know what i'm okay with that too because i have the lord i fellowship with him every single minute of every day i through the holy spirit communicate every single minute of every day so it's okay When we're all standing in heaven, we'll get to fellowship with each other for eternity. So the trade-off is pretty good. Guys, that was 2 John 1. Tomorrow will be 3 John 1. And it is only one chapter also. It's another short one. And then we will be done with this series. I don't know where we're going to go next, but we'll find out. And when the Lord leads us there, that's where we'll go. Guys, I love you all and I thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.